I've been staring at this screen for two hours. I want to build a portfolio. But I have absolutely no idea where to start. Not because I don't know how to code. I know how to code. But somewhere between learning frameworks and shipping features and optimizing performance, I forgot what it feels like to just make something for the joy of it. So I did what I always do when my brain feels like an empty VS Code window. I stopped looking at the screen and I tried to remember what actually made me fall in love with coding in the first place. 15 years ago, I wasn't building production apps. I was designing block skins. I would stay up till 3am just to change the background of my blog. And it was so much fun. I remember spending hours trying to pick the perfect icon that would go with my blog. And the part that I remember the most is that I wasn't really trying to build something impressive. I was just playing and having fun with it. So I thought, maybe if I could just find some of those old templates, steal that vibes bit, I could remember what that felt like. I spent an hour digging through archives, dead links, old URLs that lead nowhere. I didn't find the block skins, but I found something else. I ended up in this corner of the internet called Nail Cities, and it looks like someone took the entire early 2000s web and just kept it alive. There was this one site. The homepage was just a dark house with a single door and the word enter. That's it. No explanations. No welcome to my portfolio. Just a creepy door that you had to click to get in. You know what I found the most bizarre about it was that this person could have made a very normal homepage, but they chose not to. Instead, they made you open a door like you're entering the actual space and it felt more alive than any portfolio I'd ever seen. And somewhere in all of this, I stopped researching and started collecting. Screenshots, color palettes, every weird interaction that made me smile. And for the first time in hours, I wasn't staring at a blank screen. I opened Figma and my brain tried to do the thing where it goes, okay, what's the strategy here? What's the wireframe? What's the plan? The whole point of this was to not have a plan, not have a strategy. So I'm going to try my best to wing it. It's super uncomfortable for me, but we're going to try and see what I come up with. So I just started throwing things at the wall. First attempt, towel background with all these lines. I stared at it for 30 seconds and it genuinely started to hurt my eyes. Cool. Delete. But then I hit the actual problem. I wanted this desktop vibe, but I also needed to show my actual projects. GitHub links, YouTube videos, all that stuff. How do I do that without just making boring cards on a fake desktop? And then I had this thought. What if the projects were in carts, but windows? Like actual windows you can drag around. Little floating project windows on a desktop. So I made a component, duplicated it, and suddenly the projects made sense. And then I just kept going. A guestbook component, like the old block guestbooks where people could just drop a message. I miss those so much. A poke button. Because remember Facebook pokes? I need that back in my life. And under construction banner, because spiritually I'm always under construction. A people counter, a wall of lucky people who somehow ended up there. I don't know, I just think that would be quite cool. And definitely I need a custom cursor with sparkles. And so much extra stuff that if your CPU doesn't cry a little, I didn't do my job. And then I got completely unhinged and added a paint app. A whole mini 
painting widget. So people can leave drawings on my portfolio. This is either going to be very wholesome or absolutely chaos. Design is done. It's time to code. So I'm building this in Next.js because I need a real backend. Pokes, guestbook, messages, paintings, all that need to live in an actual database. Super base. But before any of that, I need the door. I used Nano Banana to generate this moody house image, expanded it to widescreen, converted it to SVG so I could control the door with code. The idea was simple. You click the door, it splits in half with the 3D transform, and then you can enter the site. I also really wanted the text to kind of glow and look very scary, but tried to make that work and I thought it would be quite easy because it was already in SVG format, but nah, didn't really work out. But the door worked. You click it, it splits, the transition's kind of smooth, kind of cool. So, all right, I'm happy with that and time to build an actual desktop. And now I need to build all these components the draggable windows, the poke button, the paint app, the guest book, the project cards. I could code this manually, but then I'd be spending the next five hours fighting with CSS positioning. Or I could use a tool that's going to actually help me. So I'm going to use Build.io, who are also partnering with me on this video. And here's why it actually makes sense for this project. Most AI tools generate code in isolation. They give you a component in a vacuum. Build.io actually directly connects to my GitHub repository. It's now able to see my Next.js setup that we created just now, all the existing code in the app, the Tailwind config, my file structure, and it's able to sync with Figma. So I can make sure that my hex codes, my colors, everything is exactly the same. And then we're going to start building. I built all the components we needed, and then I got a little greedy. I suddenly thought of this idea of a community suggestions feature, like a chat where people can tell me what to build next. So I told Builder to create it, and then I also added an upvote and downvote functionality. So anyone can go in, look at other people's ideas, and upvote them or downvote them. And maybe I'll create videos based on these ideas. That would be quite cool. For the actual portfolio part, we currently just have placeholder windows. So I swapped them to look like real project cards. And they would contain thumbnails from my YouTube and descriptions for the videos and then links to the YouTube videos itself. I then used Builder to open a pull request against my repository. I reviewed it with all of these new components that it added. And then it was live. I didn't have to paste a single line of code. I'm running it locally now and it's actually working. The poke button locks to my console. The paint app doesn't save anything because everything's currently just on the front end. So it's time to give this thing a brain. This is the more fun part for me because I'm definitely a backend person. So now we can get into actual database schema, tables and Figuring out how we can add some Easter eggs as well. That would be very interesting. Database time. I created all the tables that we need, like the drawings table for all of the paints that we want to display, messages table, projects, site metadata, which would contain the poke counter and the visitor counter, and then a suggestions table for users to put in their ideas. The idea I had for the paint to work was that the user would be able to draw stuff. And if you hit save, I would be able to see whatever you have drawn. So every time you go on my website and you would paint things and save them, I would then be able to view it. Nobody else can view it, only I have access to viewing it. And to make that work was surprisingly easy. All I had to do was convert whatever image you drew into base64 format, and that's what I would store in my table in my database.
okay, the site feels alive and everything is good, but I just remembered something very important that I cannot believe I almost forgot about this. I'm building a public guestbook on the internet. And the internet is full of trolls. So I wrote a rate limiter. You get five pokes per minute, two drawings every 10 minutes. Don't get greedy. And also added some database level constraints, like messages are capped at 200 characters and suggestions at 60. I also have all of my RLS policies locked down. And now I had to fix the problem with the layout. There is this one issue which is so annoying. Because I wanted all of my components to be draggable and droppable, there is an issue which is when I render them by default, there is some bug that's causing all of the projects to overlap with each other. And that's not what I want. A few moments later. I cannot believe it. It actually works and it looks not bad at all. I briefly thought about writing a collision detection algorithm. But then I looked at the time and I did what any good engineer would do. I hard-coded a 2x2 two two grid. <laughs> and sometimes dumb code is the best code and removed all of the logs. I added some Easter eggs as well, so try to find them if you can. I pushed the code to the cell, building, building, deploy it, and the door loads. I click it, the door splits. At the start of building this, I was trying to find the old block skins that I used to enjoy building, but I couldn't really find them. But now I realize that maybe the whole point was not to find them, but to find the feeling I had when I used to build it last time. So the link's down below if you want to check it out. Go poke, leave suggestions, paint something cast, and I want to see what you make. If you're watching this and you've been feeling stuck, stuck in tutorial hell or perfectionism, or just feeling like, Everything you make has to be good enough. Build the weird thing. Not the thing that ma looks impressive. Not the thing that follows best practices. Build the thing that makes you want to stay up late working on it. Because that's the thing that's actually yours. I will see you in the next one.